Yes, peeps, how are we? And welcome back to the Kegs Podcast. On today's episode, we have my good friend, Sinead Haig. And Sinead is probably one of the biggest inspirations in my life since I was literally like a young lad. You'll hear me talking about her and bigging her up so much in this episode because I probably wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for that woman. Do you know what I mean? Like she is an absolute legend. So on today's episode, we talk about so many different topics. Like we talk about her whole journey so far. And we touch on so many things that you're going to get so much value from that I got so much value from, such as changing your identity and growing into your true authentic self. We sort of touch on like the spirituality and the travel side of things and like Bali and her journey so far from like working in Magaluf to ending up like being a business wellness entrepreneur all around the world. We obviously touch on things like meditation and balance and habits and all that there sort of good stuff too. So, and I really hope you enjoy it because I am absolutely buzzing to have be having this woman here in the podcast. And also the sponsor of this podcast is no other than the Brave White Meditation by the woman herself, Sinead Hegarty. So thanks for sponsoring the podcast. Thanks for coming on. For anyone who doesn't know, the Brave White Meditation course, which you'll actually hear about on this episode, is a 21 day guided meditation course obviously made by Sinead Haggerty. I'm sure every single person listening to this episode has heard about the benefits of meditation, has heard about how important it is to meditate and sit with yourself and connect into your true authentic self every single day. Whenever I first started hearing about people talking about meditation, I didn't have a clue what it was really. I was like sitting down with yourself and you're just meditating like this. That's crazy. What are you doing? But it wasn't until I actually done Sinead's meditation course, like actually done it for 21 days in a row is when I actually was like, wow, the power and benefits of meditation is crazy because I try to like here and there random YouTube videos and yes, you do get some benefit from it, but you're not in an actual like flow of doing it every single day, like in a routine of doing it. But with Sinead's meditation course, like you start off every single day, every single day is different. You, and you literally go internal, you work on your limited beliefs, you work on your mindset, you work on different things inside you. And then you start visualizing yourself and your future and things like that too. Like every single day is so powerful. So highly recommend doing the meditation course. There's so many benefits to meditation. Like it can help you become aware of your limited beliefs and your negative self-talk. And it can improve your, like, your happiness, your calmness, improve your sleep. Like it helps you become more sure and helps you understand and know yourself so much more so that you can show up to this world as your true authentic self, which will then inspire other people to be their true authentic selves as well. So yeah, if you want to start meditating but don't know how or don't know where to start or don't think you're good at it this is your course you need to give it a go even if you do meditate and you have meditated before try the course get you in a routine of doing it and it is genuinely game changing like i meditate nearly every single day i try and mix it up a wee bit with like breath work and things like that but i meditate most days and i am obsessed with it like everyone can benefit from meditation like i've done it my mom's done it my friends do it like everyone benefits from it so get it for yourself get it for a gift get it for a friend whatever it may be and she needs very kindly give me a 10 percent discount code for all of you guys so if you want to do this meditation course all you have to do is put in code kegs 10 whenever you're checking out on the website and that will get you 10 percent off which will save you a few squids do you know what i mean and also guys can you all do me a massive favor and please hit subscribe it actually means so much to me a lot more than you know so yeah Thank you so much and enjoy the episode. We are here on the Cakes Podcast. We hope you enjoy the show. Yeah. Hello and welcome back to the Cakes Podcast. I am very excited about today's guest. So I've been following this girl probably for about seven, eight years. No joke, since I was like 16 or 17. And I've watched her journey from being like a skinned party girl in Magaluf till this wellness entrepreneur worldwide. So Sinead Haig, welcome. <laughs> Oh my god, sorry. I just want to say I'm just so proud of you. You're so cute. <laughs> like, it just makes me so happy when I see you. I don't know, because obviously we come from the same hometown. Yeah. <laughs> and we've both came from, like, a lot of judgment and stuff like that. So it was so nice when, like, so, like you started. Do you know that um, TikTok trend where they're like, go, little rock star? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like that with you. I love and that. there's a few other people too. You know, is it Keelan who, in Oma? Oh, she? Keelan Conley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, she's so cute. And I love listening to her. And I'm like, go, little Because it's hard. It is hard. It's hard to put yourself out there, yeah. especially being from where we're from as well. Yeah. And, yeah, no, you've honestly, since since I was, like, 16, I've been, like, looking up to you. Like, <gasps> you've been probably, like, one of my, like, biggest inspirations since I was away lad and i say i probably wouldn't even be here like doing this right now if it wasn't for you do you know what i mean so thank you for that oh my god well it is my absolute pleasure and like it actually makes me so it's like my purpose you know not my purpose but it's like one of my purposes to like show people that if they want to do something they can just do it even though people are going to judge you you just have to do it Mm. because once you become your true authentic self there's no fucking stopping you. 100%. You know what I mean? I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, Sinead, I'm sure probably everyone will listen to this episode will know who you are, but 
tell us a wee bit about yourself obviously that's a big question because you've been i honestly been watching your journey like i said from your like Michael, life i remember seeing you in, like liverpool going to the med the weekends or like during the weekend stuff and then obviously i've seen your whole journey from like traveling going through breakups like, like growing as a person and like then inspiring other people now you have your whole whole empire yes oh my god there's so much i'd say that my i always say like i have a ever expanding identity so it's so hard to put it in like one box mm. because um there is so many because I do, you know, well, I do a lot of wellness online. I'm a meditation coach. Um, I have 3.4 businesses. 3.4? point <laughs> three, like, because I own 25% of one. So okay. it's like, <laughs> so, um, so it's like, I own a few businesses. Like, I've, I've really just, like, invested into myself and threw myself into the deep end and done loads of things yeah you've done a lot to be fair yes yeah no and now you're obviously owning the whole braveway and everything out there like it's just been incredible to watch yes. so obviously you're from like where i'm from county mm-hmm. tyrone you're from castle Derg, which is like i think it's like 30 minutes away from me up the there up Woo-hoo. the there guy so how did you go from that to sort of this now like you obviously did you always want to go traveling always 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 want to go travel never went for a long time because i was always waiting Mm. Like waiting on friends to come with me, waiting on boyfriends, waiting on, then waiting on another boyfriend, <laughs> and then waiting on, <laughs> you know, waiting on my body to be better, waiting for me to have enough money. Like you're never going to have enough. You're mm. never going to feel like the best. You're never going to be fully fucking ready. You just got to get on the plane sometimes. Yeah. And I think I learned that the hard way because it took me about, I think I wanted to go 20, it took me like four years and every year it would be like, this year, oh man, I need to save a little bit more money. Mm. But then a good example of it is like, I remember was in, I think I was in Liverpool and I was saving to go. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to go. And then I was like, you know what, I need to save a little bit more. I think, I think I need to save a little bit more. So I saved, I, I stayed and I got fired at Christmas, literally a week before Christmas. And I was so scared and I was just so ashamed. I didn't tell my mom and dad. I stayed on Christmas day and like, cause I was, couldn't afford the flight, told them I was working lies i got fired like for, for taking a shot <laughs> for and taking beer, a shot and beer keller in in liverpool shut up and i was so scared it was literally like one of the stress most stressful times and i remember being like i could have been fired over there where i was supposed to be traveling like in australia mm. or something and at least i would have went and did it like i had so much regret at that moment i was like i already like i feel like if i would have feel doing the thing that i actually wanted to do yeah then you know but then i was like fuck it so fuck then it. i got i went after that i was like as soon as i got a little bit of a little bit of money yeah i went on minimum to australia oh yeah yeah i went to australia with like no money as well <laughs> <laughs> don't go to australia with no money guys like it's it's not it's not a pleasant thing <laughs> to nah. do unless you get a job at a cruise ship and you don't actually need any money which i did but i wouldn't recommend that job either it's horrible yeah you said that is the most horrible job. <laughs> it's the worst job ever um but before that you were in seasons of my life weren't you seasons of my life yeah um which I think made me as well, like, mm. who I am. Yeah. And, like, I, we did so many, much partying. I met so many people. I think, like, that's where I picked up most of my people skills. Yeah. Because you have to drag people in off, off the streets into the bar. Guys, I was one of those people, like... We I, did the exact same job. I did on the same for BCM. Yeah, and you... I must have <laughs> just missed you. I think you, le- you left the year before I arrived. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's mad. Because um, I love BCM. Like, t- BCM till I die. It literally gave me, like, the best job ever. Like, I moved my way up and then ended up having, like, a really good job. Yeah. Like, looking after all the DJs and you know just doing managing that side of things and if it didn't close i think it closed down for like two years yeah because i got i started the year it opened back up yeah and i see if they it didn't close down i would have never left i think like <laughs> not and like i'm so glad I, like i got that opportunity to leave but my job was so nice and cushy at that point that like i just never wanted to leave stay there forever yeah it was such a vibe i think that's actually how i started following you to be fair because i was working in river island in oma that's where and I used to work too. Did you? I'm just following. Yeah, you that was one of my first jobs. <laughs> worst ever. Like, I loved read. It. No, I actually didn't mind River Island. All Saints was the one that was rough. Oh, really? I don't know. Because you're staring at a wall for eight hours you know, and like no one tips you. Mm. Like you're literally working and it's the hardest job because, especially All Saints, like I was looking at, nobody came in. Like, yeah. and you weren't allowed to talk to your people. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, get you. I was like, why are we not allowed to talk? And we were not like, to talk to each other. Yeah, it was really weird. It was really weird dynamic. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe that was that. just my experience. But yeah, I was working with Ryan. I think I might have been like 16 or 17. And I wanted to like travel, but I didn't have a clue. And then Darren Bradley, who works with Ryan with me, he was like, oh, I should follow this girl, Sinead Hegg. She like, does scenes in Magaluf. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I seen someone 
like actually like doing the party seasons and stuff because obviously I've done like six now but yeah. I was like f- from watching you that's probably how I started as well um, and yeah. but yeah I love those times but I'm looking back now I'm like I could not do that now like, oh poor. my god yeah but like you literally it literally alcohol becomes your blood it's in your veins <laughs> and you just if you don't have it you're you literally can't live like you have to drink every single night every day and every day how did I stop? <laughs> and it's so funny now because I'm like you know, like, why, how did I do that to my body? It's mm. crazy. I'm like, oh my God, if I damage my body now. I, I know. I'm like, much. I'm like, oh my God, I drank last night and I feel awful and I'm going to cleanse my body. Of, I'm going to the waterfall to Literally. cleanse. I had a dream last night about Ibiza because I obviously done three seasons in Ibiza. But I had, and I kind of missed it a wee bit because I have loads of mates who were back there at the start of the mm. season. And then I had a dream last night. I was like thinking, should I go back? And of course, I was like, should I go back to Ibiza? And I was like, I would fucking die at Ibiza if I went back now. Can't uh-huh. hack it anymore. But I think it's like a cost. Like, it's like, you just keep going. You do. It's just don't stop drinking, and then just doesn't affect yeah, you. which is not good. Like no, nah, definitely it's not. not. A vibe. Um, so you've obviously been on this massive growth journey. Where did that sort of start? Like, were you always sort of into like ment- mindset and stuff like that? There, or was there like a pinpoint where you're like, oh my god, right, I want to grow as a person? Um, yeah, I think everyone. I think everyone that has growth and anyone you see like preaching about mental health or preaching, you just know they've been somewhere dark, mm. and I think that's what makes them so much more passionate because they've been there. So, you know, when I did go to Australia, you know, I was going through a really hard heartbreak and it wasn't just the heartbreak, it was like my self-worth and like I never knew how to love myself. And, you know, how I loved myself was him loving me. So without his love, I was like, oh my God, I need your love to feel worthy. And this, you know, the cycle continued to like a point where there was just like so much darkness. And you know with that darkness you know comes the two voices like stay keep fighting and there's one like you're useless blah blah blah. so I went and seeked out help like in terms of like I went and like read books and did like all that stuff and I I did step by step step by step and like all those things like little things like YouTube videos part no it wasn't podcast time it was YouTube videos and stuff like that like those things like saved my life and yeah and I was just so shocked that like there was no resources and tools for people out there to you know get over these little things like when you lose your job or whenever you go through a breakup we were never taught how to deal with that stuff we were just taught you're gonna go to school and then you're gonna go to university and then you're gonna get a job you're gonna get married then you're gonna have kids and you're gonna live happily ever after no one tells you the shit happens and that here's the tools to deal with it because I just didn't know how to deal with it so then like my passion grew once I decided to you know invest into it study a bit more get into it i was just like people need to know this shit 100%. and it's it's and now it is becoming a thing like in schools and oh, is people it, yeah? are being taught yeah i think so i think like a lot of people are put even teachers are putting even though they don't have to they already work so hard and then they put in the work because they know it's affecting people now mm. more than anything like mental health so i definitely think there is a big shift there definitely needs to be a lot more from the government but it's the new earth it's the new earth it is 100 percent. it's coming this is the whole consciousness thing i feel like the whole people are also coming to understanding that you don't actually have to go to this way that society told you to go anymore like so many people are now breaking free of that sort of route like route schedule that people yeah. think you actually need to have as well um but obviously from doing this and from doing all the mindset you also have to do the work inward and how did you find was best for you to sort of go inward and obviously you know what you're going to say meditation <laughs> but like how did you figure that out like obviously well the thing is right with meditation I'm not going to say meditation right now even though I am a meditation teacher of a really good meditation program <laughs> called Braveway but um you know I began with reading and and self-awareness I like I decided to get to know me yeah and once I got to know me I started to understand why I made decisions my triggers why I did things that I, the way I did, why I, you know, reacted the way I did in certain situations. And then I started to understand other people, like mm. their human behavior and why they do the things that they do. And once you start having compassion for other people of the things that they've went through and why they react in the way they do, you start to gain more clarity and self-realization, which is like, you know, the key really to your own freedom 100 percent. freedom is the exact word that i'm thinking of as yeah. well like i was thinking i was talking about it yesterday to one of my mates and we're basically all born into this world as our true authentic selves mm. but then society and people will be coming in and being like you can't do this you should be doing this don't be doing that that's weird do this if you want to be successful like all these different things are coming in and that's making you go away from your true self because you might be doing and saying and acting in certain ways that isn't actually who you truly are 
because you want to be liked by other people or you want to fit in and all this here thing. But if you actually go inward and question everything, be like, why do I do this job? Do I actually like what I'm doing? Like actually question everything, then you'll find out what you actually like yeah. to do. Do you know what I mean? And then by doing that, you'll then find out who you truly are, which is like one step closer to your true self. But as well, what I was saying as well was like you have all these things that happen in your life like trauma and negative emotions and limiting beliefs and all these things the way i was describing it on my story yesterday was you're trying to like push towards your best version of yourself which is your true self when you were born but all of these chains are pulling you back and mm. each individual chain is like a limiting belief or a trauma or a negative emotion that you have stored inside me but whenever you like do the work inward become aware of these things <laughs> sorry i'm going on the wrong page no become, go, aware, become aware of these things and like figure out what it is just so you can release it so it no longer serves you and then when that chain breaks off you're one step closer to becoming who you truly are yeah do you know what I mean? does that make sense I love that yeah I, I don't know if anyone's seen me just watch him I was like I'm so proud of him <laughs> I just feel like he just gets it and like I'm so I'm just like I'm just like that's it and once and like I'm watching you now yeah. so I'm watching you go through what I went through before and I'm at the other end because I'm like I don't care I know exactly who I am like I am at you know, I obviously have a lot more to go through and to do and like to mm. find out I'm a lot more experiences to go through in life. But I'm like, you know, if someone tries to tell, I'm like, no, yeah. like I can just go ahead and be like, if you think I'm weird, if you think I'm being this and being that, like, that's you, that's your thing. Mm. And like, I'm just going to go because I know exactly what I want and, you know, how to get there and the steps. And, you know, you're just like, the next you're behind me now oh, so yeah, you're because yeah. you're how old are you 24 so you're 24 so like when to be fair you're a lot ahead of me when i was 24 <laughs> <laughs> like i was hanging <laughs> out of someone's sofa in fucking Magaluf. so you're a like you're a staff ahead of the game so imagine <laughs> what you're gonna be like when you're 29 <laughs> i'm excited because yes. to be fair one thing that i always find myself doing before like a, like a, maybe a year ago or like a couple of months ago i'd be comparing myself to like people like you and like other people mm. on your like level and then i'm like but they're quite a bit older than me and they have a lot more experience than me and stuff like that there, do you know what I mean? So it's just like to not compare yourself. Even people my own age, like you shouldn't be comparing yourself to anyone at all. Yeah, and that's the problem then because you've got two ways of looking at things. So you could look at someone right, for example, and you could be like, look, Sinead's doing this. That means I can do it. Mm. But then you could also be looking at it and be like, oh, I compare myself to what she's doing yeah. and other people. But then that's when getting to know yourself is really important because, mm. you know, if you look inside and be like, okay, do I like meditation? Well, no, I don't want to be like Sinead because she doesn't like, like what I mean? She likes to be a meditation teacher. Why I like to do something else and yeah. I like to... So once you start to just really get to know yourself, like that's the key, like as you said, and you're finding yourself now and then yeah. you have to break the limiting beliefs and you have to keep going and keep going until like, you're just like... Whoosh. I know all the chains are gone. <laughs> yeah, but another thing is, right, with meditation, because we were talking about this in the course and obviously meditation helps you find yourself but like in terms of what so like say you're thinking about thoughts um and you're training your brain in meditation every time a thought comes through you like put it in the cloud and then you just like let it float away mm. because these thoughts are like so conditioned patterns like this is the fucking program that someone else wrote mm -hmm. so once you start like going hmm hmm and like just like slightly putting the way then you start having another thought and then you go back and then you but then sometimes it's just hmm oh, yeah. right mm -hmm. That is literally soul coming in. I love that. And you will notice, like, you will start to be aligned with different things in your life. Mm -hmm. Once you start, like, removing the chatter of other people, you will start noticing things like, oh, look at that over there. Or you'll just start noticing things about yourself. Like, your true self literally, like, starts to come in. And it'll come in pieces, in pieces. And then... Have you had any major limiting beliefs that you had to really work on to get over? Oh, fuck yeah. Like, so many. But I did therapy. Yeah. So I cheated. You know yeah. what I mean? No, to be fair, I, did, I read a lot of books first did a lot of beliefs and meditation and like but it's very hard to understand your limiting beliefs until someone's t staring you in the face sometimes like okay, with a yeah. therapist they're like why why don't you do that uh -huh. or like a life coach and you're like oh well yeah why do i think that about like one of the biggest ones i, I think for me was um you know money mindset yeah um i wasn't doing anything with I, like as you, you said like you knew me as skin traveler mm -hmm. that was my identity that was why I thought people followed me. Like, this is hilarious. Me stealing water from the fucking water fountain at the gym to save money. You know, like, things like yeah. that. And I was like, I can't go and make money now. Like, yeah. that was my limiting belief. And then, because this is my identity. So, you know, when you're sitting in a therapy room and they're like, okay, but you can, when you have success, you can do it your own way. Uh -huh. And obviously, there's all these things that we have. First of all, you've got things like Corella Deville. Anyone that has money growing up. Or, and you're like, what you're watching, girls look like divas. 
and you're also conditioned I don't know about you but like are people around me if you have money look who does she think she is mm, yeah like I that is such a common thing she, like thinks she's something because she's got a bit of money driving around there like that is embedded so I was so like obviously I didn't know that you know, I didn't know that those things were embedded in me. So if I went for success, that I would be labeled as someone who's a diva or someone who's, and I didn't identify with that term. So that was a, a limiting belief, thinking that if you have money, you're going to be a diva. Mm-hmm. And like that one, that one thing that the therapist says to me, she's like, when you have success, you can do it your own way. And then of course I do it my own way. You know, 100%. I do it with charity. I do it with my like donations. I do, I, I use it in the right way. I employ people that I want to employ, I give people jobs. Like it's not about like fancy things. Although you can have fancy things. Yeah, what is, is success that? to you? I mean, I've, I felt, I've felt success like for about a year or two, like two years, financial freedom, just in terms of you've got time to create. Yeah. And to, yeah, like literally, financial freedom that's all it is and people think they want money but they just want freedom yeah 100 percent. they just want time and freedom and once you have that doesn't even matter how much you have in your bank as long as you have enough to do all that 100 percent. and that yeah. was, what was your sort of process to it was obviously you done the therapy then did you have to do more work did it keep coming in more and more like i noticed with me have you done breath work before Mm-hmm. so I, that's how I did my course as well like I learned oh, breath yeah. work and stuff yeah so what I found breath work I had heard people talking about before but now every time I do it I do it nearly every morning now like my you should, I've been different months since you last seen me you know I know I've been in <laughs> silent retreat not knowing what's going on everyone's left and you came back like Siobhan has had a spiritual awakening have you spoke to her? <laughs> her she does the breath work at all what she loves it <laughs> so I text her I take it the clean hand out of my because I come out of the silent retreat and Siobhan would be sceptical enough about spiritual she wouldn't be like she'd just be like like I, like I spoke to my angels you know, like, yeah, and I text her being like I seen God like taking the hand right? I was like I, I seen God mm. and she's like oh my god unreal I was like <laughs> I go on a silent retreat for three days <laughs> you believe I've spoke to God today <laughs> Like, I'm just so confused. When she's been doing breathwork, I'm actually going to her breathwork girl on Sunday. Oh my God. I can't wait. But yeah, so with breathwork, oh, yeah. um, I, just breathing and stuff, before I'd done it, I was like, load of shit. Like, how do people actually get anything from that? And every single time I've done it, I'm not even joking, I've got like messages, I don't know where it's coming from. It could be coming from my true self or like the yeah. universe or whatever. I've had full on downloads. This made me a better person every single time I've had it. And recently a lot of my limiting beliefs are coming up that I didn't even know, I didn't wasn't aware of. And, but you actually have to like, get the limit belief but mine was that I'm lazy so my mom when I was a teenager I was the, yes. I was in a bad I was like I was kind of in a bad mindset just wanted to do nothing and sort of sleep and blah blah my mom would always call me lazy but that is imprinted into my brain mm-hmm. that I'm lazy so now anytime I try and go do something the thoughts that I'm lazy comes up that I'm not going to complete that it's not going to happen blah blah but I didn't even wasn't aware of it until now and like even this morning was doing a breath work because I'm starting this have you seen that guy Connell Rice on TikTok he like mm-hmm. basically records his full day and he's like proper productive like gets on top of everything I was like I'm gonna try that but my brain this morning was coming in you're lazy you'll not do that and I was like fuck off I can prove right now that I'm not lazy because I get up early do my morning routine get loads of shit done go to the gym every day like I'm actually proving to myself that I'm not lazy to get rid of this limiting belief but I think you have to have proof as well yeah definitely and but there is you have to search for the proof because like it's so embedded into you Mm. and you have to search for because I'm the same like you you were lazy I'm messy and unorganized like my mum thinks I'm messy and unorganized and she as well sees me as this identity of like just a fuck up yeah. like I'm a fuck up like anyone who does season seems to be a fuck up Amanda. <laughs> like let's be real so like it's just like one of those things like my mom even works for me and like I'm I'm her boss yeah. <laughs> still she, I'm still a fuck up <laughs> like and like it's it's just like something that like I had to deal with as well like you also have to deal with you know that's what they're they've dealt with they don't yeah. really get like positive reinforcement and so you have to and I had to sit down and write okay think of all the things I've been su- successful and even the small little tiny wins like literally writing them all down and being like look I can do things I don't yeah. you know what I mean I am organized it's so funny because I'm not organized but like if I want to be but I want to be organized and something that I'm passionate about mm. and then I always say that like you should never let anybody tell you how capable you are of something because they have no idea what you're capable of or what you've been through yeah. or how passionate you're going to be about something because because meditation like saved my life and it's it helped so many people. I get so much feedback from it. Um, I'm so passionate about it. So mm-hmm. I make it work. 
100%. But get me on time to a podcast doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> we were both just saying this. We're sort of like the same sort of thing. We're like, we both end up late, 100%. But um, what was I going to say to you? Oh, yeah. So have you noticed that... Have you, th- have you like changed the mindsets of your mum and dad from all the work that you're doing? That's what I would like to ask. Okay, 100%. Yeah. Now, definitely in the last few years, it took me... took them a long time to really see me as a different person and a lot of I noticed I had a massive ego when I was at home a few like the first few times like look mom and dad like look 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 what I did like trying to prove to them like look I'm successful look mm. look look and I was like oh my god this is my ego because they're all I want is their validation yeah and I was like I have to give the validation to myself like it does not matter they could never give me the validation they do give me the validation now but like it's still you have to realize that like you're doing it because you want something else and you have to just take it back and be proud of yourself so yes definitely and also they dad always says to me that like he made me he he's fallen more in love with mom oh, with my cute. relationship I love that. advice I love that. and they're so lovey-dovey and touchy-feely and so in love and like i never seen that growing up like they obviously were told not to like touch okay, you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not really a thing it's not appropriate yeah it's not that they they didn't they just did it behind closed doors oh, so yeah. then i didn't see it and then you know, all of a sudden, like the last few years, I've just been like that. And I was like, we're always like that. We just obviously, it's not appropriate mm. in Ireland, you know, physical touch. But then we all got used to it and then we're all physical touch. You know? we're like, ah, hugs and kisses, me and mom and dad. And Jack and we're like, oh, me and Jack are on like one sofa and mom and dad are like another sofa. We're like, cute. It's like, <laughs> that is cute, to yeah, be fair. So, I rate that. Yeah. I don't know, I was even like, my mom has said that for me, even doing this sort of work on myself, it's helped her change her mindset because she was obviously like a teacher and just had like a typical Irish mom's mindset about life. Now she's so open. Like, they're all coming to Bali in July. No way, I'm jealous. I'm I, dying to get my mom here. I got my mom um, a week's pass for the yoga barn. Ah. For whenever she comes out from Mother's Day, I was like, you're gonna love it. Oh my god, that's class. Yeah, no, I'm buzzing for them, quite to be fair. Get them to experience the Bali lifestyle for a while. So they've, um, your identity has changed in her eyes. Mm-hmm. That's Massively. Good. Yeah. yeah, I love it. How did you sort of, obviously, you had this like sort of part of your identity. How did you sort of overcome change that, or has it even changed inside you, or like is it still a work in progress? It's a work in progress. Yes. Um, it's definitely a work in progress, but. So the party girl, the party girl validation definitely for me was something that had to do with my self-worth and self-love. Like I needed to be, everyone used to be like, oh my God, Sinead's out again, ha ha ha, laughing. And I'd be like, oh look, I'm the party girl and I'm out every single night. And like, I would like, that's where I got my validation and self-love. Like I was like, oh my God, everyone thinks I'm really funny and I'm out all the time. And now I look back and I'm realizing that. Mm. And you know, as time went on and drink doesn't serve you as much when you're a bit older, I was like, I, I need to get away from this and be fun without Sinead. So I started doing like Sober October and blah, blah. And I realized then that like, I don't need alcohol. Mm. Definitely don't need alcohol to get up and dance and stuff like that. Um, so I started to do the sober things and realize it wasn't, they, people still like to be around me. And it was, it's got to do with me. Yeah. But does the people pleasing com- like convert somewhere else a little bit? A hundred percent. It goes a little bit to then paying for people's stuff. Oh yeah. I do that a lot. Um, and I think sometimes that can be me being like my validate, like it, it validates me sometimes. I don't know. Like maybe I'm like, I just thought about that recently as well, but yeah, because if you, if you're, I'm sure you get that as well and you don't want nobody to not like you. You want people to 100%. That's so if, sort of been the past like few weeks. I've been, I've just because I don't like a month sober there when you were I think you were away yeah yeah I don't like a month sober there and just doing all this work on myself and it made me realize that I can actually go out still and not drink and have a good time yes and don't get me wrong I still enjoy going out having a crack but like I don't want to do it like all the oh, time like I again. used to and I started talking about it in my story and I think before a lot of people followed me because of my partiness and crazy drunk stories and shit like that there and I put up basically saying that I'm not really this party boy anymore I still like to party and I lost like over 100 followers from that like one thing and I was like that's probably people like do you know what I mean and it started making me cha- like question no, should, I, should never, I be changing it first of all never look at your follower never look at mine mm, never yeah, look at fair. who follows me and unfollows me I, people could and thousands probably unfollow me every day up and down up and down but sure there's bots there's things that like do things like yeah, that true. like it's not I never look like I think like I stopped looking at that followers and likes a long time ago because it's so funny because it plays with your dopamine it Do- does dumb dopamine it's 100 percent. so it if you've got do you not remember you, you can never have enough mm. so when instagram first came out remember you used to get 11 likes and it would say 11 likes yeah yeah, yeah. and you would buzz You'd be like look at 11 likes then you needed 100 likes to feel good then you needed a mm. thousand likes 
many likes do you need now to feel good you know it's Literally know it's never going to end and once you realize that you're like you got to give it up and then that's when you search for purpose yeah and purposeful things even if it's a small purpose like you know giving someone a tip or helping your granny or helping your granddad like things like that that's what gives you mm. a constant drip of dopamine in your brain rather than spikes yeah so it's like 100 percent. i know the whole the notification dopamine thing's massive like that's what i yeah. definitely struggled with when i started like growing on tiktok i was like constantly going on checking notifications because we mm. give you that we rush of a good feeling but one thing that i'm actually coming up because coming up in breath work a lot recently where i was putting myself worth and like the amount of like views and shit like that there and it's like something that i'm trying yeah. like trying to overcome massively but it's a work in progress still like but get yeah there. and if it is hard whenever you put work into something like a like content and then it's not reciprocated mm. but i always think like if one person feels good about something and plus you can always just think about that one person from before i always say that like you can just if someone's message you one message like those messages i print screen them and I put them in a file and i always have a look at them whenever i need to so do you do that am i starting that yeah i just put them in like a little file and then you know if i ever felt like it doesn't matter because that one person read a book that I've suggested and it changed her life and why does anything else matter? I love that. Because that's like the, that's the dopamine in your, in your brain that you need. You don't need like, oh, that didn't go well, that went well and you need to start focusing on like growth in a way as well. Like I always think like just the people in front of you, you're change their lives. Mm. See these new people, like these growth tactics and all this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're, they're necessary but we can't depend on them yeah, because the ones actually... just the ones right there like there's so many people sitting in front of you and i think like if i can change their lives yeah and people are like i need more customers i need blah 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 and i'm like you literally have the most perfect amount of people there yeah. and that's what you need to focus on because then if you're grateful yeah and usually they come anyway love with that. abundance mindset love that yeah because it's all about the ego all the numbers and stuff like this the ego taking over which ego ego becoming aware of it and fecking it off yeah. um i but what was i gonna say i so basically that was what i was saying about the mindset sort of stuff so i want to sort of i can see my content going like a mindset direction and those videos were doing shit but then i'd be getting messages from people because yeah. the videos doing shit it's the messages from people like that i'm helping some people do you know what i mean i love all yeah. that sort of stuff and um, so obviously you've done a lot of sort of traveling and I say you're probably really spiritual now as well. Mm-hmm. Did the spirituality come from traveling, do you think? Or have you always been quite spiritual? Um, no, I think I had my first spiritual awakening in... Or not, Thailand. And it kind of just happened where, you know, I started reading spiritual books. Like, just about, like, being guided and the universe, like, guiding you. And then, you know, I started to just, like, feel like everything was in my path for a reason. And, like, I always have... A, you know a reason and a good meaning behind everything that happens to me and I also started following on like a karmic route like I need to be good and everything that I've done I need, first of all I need to forgive myself from all of my past mistakes and then I need to continue my my quest and being good and then if I'm not good or something happens or I'm human that makes mistakes then I can always you know like come back and have compassion but yeah I just started like trying my best to be a good person mm. like I almost was like you know just let's just pretend there's karma let's just pretend and just like be a really good person and try my best so, like the feeling of being a good person and trying your best to be better like it does reward you so much it comes back it comes back and sometimes like it's really hard to explain to people but oh, the, yeah like about spirituality but I always try not to force it down people's throats too much because I think it's their own. I'm always like, read this book and see what you think or do this. Oh, yeah. Do you know, or do look you out know, for signs or... Because I try and I do talk about it a bit because I love it, obviously. But then sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, do I sound like a crazy person to people who may not be in this sort of stuff? Do you know what I mean? Well, not really, because if you think about it, like, let's just say I'm in, I'm in day before at you where... Mm. You might have thought I was crazy at the time, but you might have been intrigued. Yeah, so with my spiritual awakening, I think from watching you, it helped me learn about it a lot more because yeah. I had mine in Ibiza beforehand. Didn't know anything about it, didn't even pay attention to any of it. But then since I had it in Ibiza, I could, it was a feeling. And then ever since then, it was just all like from listening to you talk, from listening to other people talk, or like different things would come to me. I'm like, oh my God, that's interesting. And then learn yeah. more and more and more. And then I had my second one last month. Yeah. Last month, I lived work. From the from the I went to Ubud for a week and done mm. shit tons of spiritual work every single day and I was just crying my eyes out every single day and since then I went to a tarot reader at the end of it right and she was like um the first thing she said to me was like you died this week and I was like what do you mean I died this week she's like the version of you that existed last week doesn't exist anymore you're now in a higher version of yourself Aww. and I was like that's nice to hear and I'm not even joking since that I feel like a better version of myself like I'm just on top of it but I was like it's smart what you can do if you actually do the spiritual work do you know what I mean yeah. 
I'm going to love that. You make me want to go to Ubud now. You got to do it. I'm and I'm like leaving tomorrow. tomorrow. I'm like, oh. You're going to come back to Valley. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to Australia now, but I will always come back to Valley, like for like four months. Mm. I feel like my life is Valley, Australia, Ireland. Valley, Australia, Ireland. How long are you going to Ireland for now? Four months. Yeah. So that's a long time for me. Yeah. No, wait. Yeah, it's about three months, three or four months. And then Australia. Straight to Buzzing Australia. Yeah, buzzing. What makes you love Australia so much? <sighs> I think for me, it's like the community base. Like I just really had a nice community there. And I think you don't underestimate the power of the feeling of having a community. And even though there's a community here, it comes and goes, comes and goes. Oh yeah, some, some the whole Irish group's leaving yeah. this week. I'm like, new friends, come here. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, and, and the same is, really, people do come and go, but I just felt like, I can't even describe it, I just felt home. I just really felt at home. And I can't, I like, I'm ready to like start a life. And like, I love ballet, but like, I can't really work if you know what I mean, like mm. I can't, you know, have a, a like a set up practice and set up. I can, but like it didn't. I don't know. In Australia, I just imagined my life there and like setting up my own practice and you know really beginning this new life, like going for my coffee in the morning and sunrise swims mm. and just. But then come here as well. Like it's not, you know, it doesn't have to be. We have to settle here. You have to do here. Like why not? Can we do whatever we want? You do whatever you want. Yeah. I love her saying a, like a vision. This like so you're obviously big into like visualization and manifestation. Like, yeah. You manifested this whole entire life that you have right now. Yeah. And do you sort of do you have any tips for when you're like visualizing? Because I know I try and do it sometimes, but I'm trying to actually now what I'm f- trying to do is trying to actually feel it. Oh feel yeah. I mean? And that's hard to get to, but I'm actually like I'm, like feeling the emotions and feeling the belief that will happen. But how do you sort of get to a point where you actually believe it? If you know what I mean? See, that's the problem. Like, people are always like, Shane, I'm visualizing, I'm visualizing. And like, right, okay, let's just say you want to be, okay, let's just say you want to be a millionaire, right? Mm. And you're like visualizing it, right? You're literally visualizing and you and your big, nice, fancy house, like with your big check and like blah, 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 and such and such. And I'll turn around to you and I'll say, Do you think you deserve to be a millionaire? Mm. And then if you don't think you deserve it, what makes you think that? That's, and that's where the work is. Because here's an example, like nobody in our town's a millionaire. I mean, I don't know if there probably is, but like, you know, you don't hear that a lot. You don't hear, especially even like women or sometimes there's these limiting beliefs around who should be a millionaire. Mm. So you need to like un, in, like discover them and then you need to start to believe in yourself and that's a process. So you visualize first. First of all, you find out who the fuck you are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And once you find out who you are, then you can visualize and then when uh, you so I must be at that point now yeah of. so then you can visualize what exactly you want and then you have to start with self-belief because you can only manifest what you be- think you deserve yeah so you have to go through all those things like how can you manifest and think you like a relationship if you actually don't think you deserve someone to love you because somebody treated you like shit before or you had you know something happen with your dad or something like that so how do you think you have to go work through all that shit oh yeah definitely things happen and you need to like go through it and start to believe that you deserve it because there's a big shift for me like two three years ago when i'm manif- and i'm like as if yeah. as if that like those are the words that when you're writing the like as if then you start to do the work and then like you'd be sitting there and you one day and you'd be like i actually fucking deserve this i actually deserve this love i deserve this life i deserve all this stuff and you're like oh that's why it's happened to me because i actually because before i didn't believe it yeah and like that's another thing saying something like i deserve this People are like full of herself. Like why like blah, 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 blah. like that's a limit that's something we're embedded to be like, if I think I deserve something, like that's big headed or that's this. But that's also another limiting belief that's and a condition. Too. And it's a conditioned pattern. And if they're there, they're stuck there. They're stuck there, right? As well. So it's kinda hard to know which way to look at that sometimes. But mm. Yeah, no, that's um, that's the, the I think the relationship on limiting belief. Is something I probably need to work on. I'm not really touching on that right now. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm just I was, I'm focusing on like the the limiting belief that I was sort of having that you were talking about there now is like the success one. So I was trying to like like I was meditating, doing the breath work and stuff, and I was trying to believe that I am successful and I can get success. And I was like not feeling. It. I was like, why the fuck do I not believe in myself? Like I just couldn't believe in it. But then I afterwards I was journaling. And I was like what actually is success to me like what is it so I was just like it's freedom to be able to travel and do what I want and like have good connections with people that is like success to me and I was like I do have that and since Mm -hmm. I changed what I believe success is or like actually understood what I believe success is now when I'm like manifesting and believe that I can get success 
I fully believe in it. I can, I, might, I can feel it here. Whenever I'm like feeling gratitude or feeling believing in myself, it's like a vibration here. Yeah. That's why I've got my crystal right in front of there. <laughs> I love it. But yes, it's all about believing in yourself and like rewiring your mindset sort of. Yeah, like... It's funny because I feel like the next podcast we're going to do, you're going to be like a new man and you're going to be like, we're going to remember that time. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. And like, you're already starting to believe. So it's, you're on the path mm. and you're getting excited. And you have to, f- even when you're doing things like that, when you're visualizing, like you have to feel and sense it. Like you have to smell where you're at. You have to shake. Like when I do my visualizations, like say if I'm doing like, say in a meditation, I'm like actually shake someone's hand. Mm. They're, they're congratulating you on your success of what you've done and you're like shaking your hand i high five myself in the mirror sometimes yeah oh i do i look at myself and tell my and my eyeballs in my full eyeball like into my green eye and i look straight in and i go i love you i do that too (laughs) i literally do that all i do that whenever you're feeling the gratitude and feeling like you love your life i'm like i love you i love you i simply kiss my shoulder (laughs) i do not when i'm doing yoga i'm like oh my god yes i'm like oh my leg i'm like oh you're so cute i love you Oh my god! After ayahuasca, I couldn't stop kissing myself. That was like, weird, like I loved. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's nice to feel like that. You know what I mean? I know because sometimes, like most of the time, you don't really feel like that. Voila. So whenever you're like touching your leg, you sort of like touch. Like I touched my leg in the yoga the other day. I was like, oh, this feels like someone else's leg. Love yeah. you. Even like when you're, what I like doing as well when I'm driving, like tell yourself nice things. But just even there now when I was driving. Yeah, here, I do that too. I was like. Like comparing where I was a few years ago to literally driving to a podcast and studio to interview Sinead Haig on my podcast in Bali, I was like, so my good. fucking life is great right now. Like, life is, is good. Like- <laughs> and you know another thing, right? This is the biggest thing I always say. I just said that on my TikTok and everyone was like writing under it. They've been like, well, and I was like, no, like, you don't understand the concept. The moment that I needed nothing, I attracted everything. Like I was living in a hut in Thailand and I was like reading a book and I was like, had no money but like I was making five pound a a week or something that's nuts with making selling books that I was talking about online like I was like this book's really good the power of now was that where you started and then I made the power of now like number one on um the book depository they sent me a message and I was like oh my god I've just made a book up to number one and then they sent me loads of books and I was like oh my god and I was like this is all I need in life like just reading and just telling people to read books that I love this is all I need and I was in this hut and I was like because, like, sometimes if you think, I want all this stuff, like, you're thinking of lack, like, you're not appreciating with the life that you have because you want something else. So at that moment, I was like, you know what? It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter if, like, I get all this stuff and then I lose it all because I can go back to my hut and I can sell books. Mm. And that's that's all I wanted. And then, fucking hell, everything started happening then. I love that Yeah, thing. like, it just went deal here, deal there. Like, all these opportunities started throwing themselves. It was so weird because I was like... Yeah, the person that needs nothing attracts everything. I love that. Because there's I need just so much mindset. gratitude for your life. It's part yeah. of gratitude as well. I also try to, I've, Avian was talking to me the other day, and I'm trying to change my vocabulary when I'm saying I need something or I want something and change it to like, I intend to get this or this is like, you have to cha- change the words yeah. as yet. well. Not yet. yet. Not yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, because I, one thing I'm like, obviously you're saying you have to accept that you can like live with nothing. And that's one thing I'm sort of, coming in a lot and I'm becoming aware of it is I'm, I worry about like the future and stuff too much and I'm just like right if you accept that you can literally live off nothing like you're saying then yeah. it'll all come to you there's a good thing she, like Siobhan told me as well like she was I was in the book Tribe of Mentors and this girl had this technique of just say so what so you lose like if someone says to me right I'm gonna put I'm putting this I'm putting this money right say like I'm making an investment or I want to do an app or something I'm like fuck that's a lot of money and then I'm like if I lose it and the, the retreats for example like I had to pay all their treats up up front that's a fucking lot of money yeah right and then I don't know if people are gonna even buy the fucking tickets and at the end of the day so you're putting out this money and then you're like it doesn't hap- work so what I can live on nothing right so what and then like what happens then oh so what and then all oh, people will like Stop following you. So what? That's a good bit. You know, like you just. It was Emma Kearney. You know Emma Kearney. She actually has that mindset, and she was telling me about that. Yeah. About a night out, she had this big inspirational speech. She was like, "So what if I lose people? Fuck it." Do you know what I mean? Like I was like, "That's, that's actually quite good." Yeah. Ahead. You're just like, "So what?" Yeah, yeah. What you lose all your followers, you lose your thing. So what? You go back to your fucking hot in Thailand and you read your fucking book. Love it. And I you, love you know, that. you fall in love with a fucking surfer or whatever. Not me. I'm in love. But um, <laughs> <She's> in love. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so it's like that mindset of like, if all else fails, you've got your mind. You've got your mind. Yeah. And, and your book. 
and your books. And the last one thing I'm loving at the minute is I've really nailed my morning routine. I'm actually loving reading now. And oh my god! The first time in my life where I'm like loving reading every morning. Like I don't look at my phone. That's if I look at my phone, then that fucks my whole day. Yeah. So I like leave my phone at home, drive to Anomaly, whack out the journal, whack out the book, and just spend like the first hour of my morning doing that. And what sort of books? Would you recommend, obviously you're looking at me now and you're saying like me at this point in my life, what sort of books do you recommend to me now? First of all, like once you start doing that, you're on a, you're, you're like this. Because you look at, if you look at other people who are successful or you look up to, if you look at their habits and you just copy them, you're literally on the path. That's mm. what I did. I did it with Siobhan. I watched Siobhan's habits. Yeah. She, I was like, really skin traveler, blah, blah, blah. I met Siobhan, she's like one of my idols. And I watched her be like, oh no, I gotta leave because I have to work. And I'm like, well, you don't actually have to. Like you work for yourself. Why are you leaving at eight o'clock at night? Or why do you know? And I was like, she, I need to set boundaries. If I want to be successful, I seen her getting up in the morning and reading books and blah, blah, blah. I, I was like, I got to get up in the morning and read books. And step by step, day by day, 10 pages by 10 pages, you know, we got there and we're, you know, the same now. We're flying home tomorrow on our fucking business class flight. Love like we're that. drinking our champagne. So it's not, do you know what I mean? It's weird to think that it literally just starts with those, like daily habits so mm. you're coming in strong don't worry it's surround yourself with people as well because yeah. obviously I'm around Role all these models. people in Bali who get up early do all this stuff and I was like motivating me to do it then as well and then so once I started I'd done it for like a week yeah and I honestly seen the most massive improvement on how I feel every single day and how productive I am every single day from doing this morning routine and now when I don't do it I feel like shit that day so I'm like right I'm yeah. just gonna keep doing it do you oh you're mean? hooked you're in <laughs> it so the big side record okay what book are you reading uh I'm just finishing good vibes good life okay so the book I would recommend right now is 101 Essays to Change the Way You Think. Okay. It's such a nice book to just change your mindset every day. You just get like a little bit of oomph every day. Mm. Um, have you ever read Awake in the Giant Within? No. Yeah, that one's a game changer. Tony Robbins? Yeah, it's a it's a big one. It's 500 pages, small, wee, tiny writing, but take it step by step. And everything I wrote in that book, because it has like they were places you can write goals, blah, blah, blah. Every single goal that I have wrote down in that achieved way more even at this point so it's weird it's definitely a game changer topic habits i seen that yesterday i was gonna buy it i might buy it today jack's reading that at the minute there's, there's so, a bookshop here i'm gonna yeah buy it actually. i actually bought a topic habits for him there so it's there um it's a very good but i built my businesses on a topic habits i've read it's the only book i've ever read twice yeah because and how did you how did you because it's, it's about building habits okay so it gives you all these little small techniques and you know silly things like doing like habit stack like I would get up make my bed pull the blind up and the neck so it's like a stack put it up pull it around up and take all the stuff off the floor mm. and clean up the floor so th- that was like a habit stack and the next thing my room was clean every day do you know what I mean it wasn't just like I had to do it it was like piling up so little things like that and then like when I was starting a business it was like okay today just go to the accountant and ask about setting up a business tomorrow go and find out what kind of business you need what how does it work do I need a business plan small little things like that and so I read that and I honestly don't think without that book I would have stepped forward because it was just like just today just walk into the enterprise and ask for help on building a business like that was all I had to do that day. And then the second time I read the book, like by the time I'd finished the book, the business was open and I had already sold the spaces. Right, I'm buying the street after yeah. this conversation. And then I was like, set, I was doing the brave way then, the, that business. And I was like, okay, I'm a wee bit slow here. And I've already told people this is happening. So I need to get my groove on. So I was like, right. And I don't usually read books twice because I, rem- I can remember so well because mm. I preach it. Um, but I read it again. And sure as... But um, there it was. The business was done, and the course was ready by the time I'd finished. So, and it's really easily read. That's a good one. Um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna get straight after. I'm excited. I need to pay. Should should I run the toilet? Okay, I'll keep you entertained. What's that song? You know that one? Jiggle, jiggle, and fold. Guys, I can't even tell you how much I could stop thinking about that song when I was in my meditation camp. It's jiggle, jiggle, let's fold, dinner, dinner, wiggle, wiggle, and hold. I don't know the words. Sorry. I'm not that kill. I'm not that dying with the kids on TikTok. Like, Higgs is, I'm like, OG. Oh my God, is Instagram like the old Facebook? You know, like, Facebook's like for, like, your mom. And, like, is TikTok now for, like, Higgs' age? And I'm like the Facebook with the Instagram. Oh my God. That's, that's what it is. 
Anyway, jiggle jiggle. That's so. Okay, and I need to shut up now because he needs to edit this out, and I'm just like singing. I kept them in Oh, wait, you need to close that. I sang them a song. I sang them a song. <laughs> right, so we're going to do some questions from the gram slash my own questions. So, um, I'll skip through a few of them because we've answered some of them. So, advice for when you're a spiritual person but your partner isn't and it causes conflict. Okay, um, I mean, I can relate to this because Jack's not spiritual. Um, and this is a great wee story for anyone who has this, who's going through like maybe awakening or something like that. And I think that we put so much pressure on our partners to be exactly like us, but there's a little there's actually a little story okay so i met i met this guy and he was like my doing a sports massage on me he's very spiritual he's from our hometown and he he's very spiritual and his his wife wouldn't be spiritual and obviously i was struggling with that this was before jack and i this is i was just like you know men aren't really into it as much and i i I find it hard to you know i don't know i just find it hard and he was like i was like how do you how do you deal with it and he's like my wife is is an angel sent down from heaven to ground me like and she i accept her for exactly who she is and she accepts me for exactly who i am and i was like that's what it is like it's like jack accepts accepts me for exactly who i am and i accept him Mm -hmm. he doesn't ask me to come and know everyone's watch football games with him do you know what i mean why it doesn't have to be if there's like definitely like a conflict in terms of like you but why do i need to tell him how to live his life like yeah. if he accepts me and we support each other we have a playful we're, we have a playful relationship keeps me really grounded and also i've been around a lot of spiritual people i've just came back from a meditation camp and like you know that you can go and hang about with people anytime you want i can talk to you about spiritual stuff yeah, yeah. Like, why do i need my partner to constantly be talking about stuff yeah we talk we talk about stuff like growth and blah 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 and like but we're we just love each other so it's just like this it works is, that's what love is accept them for exactly who they are so and plus plus don't you worry because once they see what you're doing they're gonna start asking you what you're doing yeah yeah Jack's yeah like, what's that what's that book you're reading or like what does that do or like what was that podcast oh really yeah because he sees how it, it affects you and he sees like you know if i am meditating and i come out and i'm like oh i love you and like i'm such a good mood because i've just done like a gratitude relationship meditation he's like oh what did you do and i'm like hey you don't want to try it and then he's like oh and then he tells me what he's seen in his gratitude meditation for me and then i'm like oh you know i love it just like lead by example i always say read by example as well because like if you read a book mm. just read it you don't have to shove it down someone's throat i get that and that's that's one thing when i'm thinking of like i say a future partner i'm like i'd like them to be spiritual and like to travel but you sort of cleared it up you don't actually need to be spiritual um it's questions for both of us so I sort of answered this where a 22 year old wants to stop the party and lifestyle she's in a rut and wants to change her mindset and lifestyle to be fair she's only 22 but I feel like, I feel like we're both sort of at that, that point as well where we're both changing we're like we're partying lifestyle. when we were 22 like that's what that's I was absolutely steaming on the beef every single day I think you gotta work out the I always say with the when people are like drink, drink if someone's like Shania like I actually I make such a fool of myself when I'm drinking I'm like if the bad outweighs the good then you need to sort it out because if it's affecting your mental health, it's a different story. Like if it's affecting my mental health, I'll take a step back. Whereas if I'm fun and I'm enjoying it, that's all grand. But if the bad outweighs the good, you really need to start understanding yourself a bit more and realizing what serves you. Because if you know what doesn't serve you, you need to give yourself that self-love and discipline. But Mm. it's hard, better, especially in Ireland. I feel like as well, if you do go out, Except that you're going out and the next day to sort of chill and be compassionate for yourself. That's mm. what I'm trying to learn. If I do go out and party the next day, just do nothing and be compassionate to yourself. Don't be a dick to yourself because when you're hungover, your brain can be a dick to you. Just be like, those thoughts aren't me. Chill out. Love you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Us all hugging ourselves in the mirror. Like, love you. <laughs> um, how has Bali changed you both? It's a dream of mine to go and reconnect. It seems so special. I think the thing about ballet is definitely just the people that you're around and like um the mindset like mm-hmm. you start to figure out things like how to how to do things more easier like your success or your programs or you're just like oh how did you do that like I think one of the best things that a quality someone can have is um curiosity so I did a lot of asking questions in in ballet you know how did you do that business and how did you do this and mm-hmm. then like formed my own business through all the answers and I think there's just so much I wouldn't say there's yeah, I would say that it's the role models here for me, definitely. Yeah. And obviously all the spiritual and the way you can just talk so openly about fucking anything. 100%. And everyone's like, oh my God, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Why well, sit at home if you go home and be like, 
I did breath work and I heard, I seen my limiting beliefs finally. They would be like, here, have a pint. Oh, they're, <laughs> they're like, why is 100%. That's what I said the other day. I have like, we be going to the Anomaly Cafe every morning and we have like proper, like substantial, deep conversations yeah. that you learn from them, you learn about them, you learn from each other. And it's just like, you don't actually have these like, conversations in many other places because they are a bit maybe out there or it's just like, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I love it. That's one of my favorite things. Another thing is I think the Bali's a really powerful sp- place spiritually. And when I first arrived here, my anxiety, I hadn't, anxi- hadn't had anxiety in a long time. And it brought up all of these really like negative emotions and feelings and my head was just going all over the place. But I think Bali because of its energy actually brought all these up for me to actually go inward, heal my inner child, deal with all this sort of stuff. So I feel like Bali will definitely encourage you to do that as well. And um, like whenever I first Your Bali's my Australia. Yeah. Yeah. I did that and Australia still is my one of my favourite places, but it's where I broke and where I repaired. Yeah. At the same time. So and when it brings it up and then it repairs you. See, but see, once you get that, you're going through repair. Mm. But see, once you go through repair, everything's so bright and lovely. Mm. And you're like, wow. And that's what I went through in Australia. So I think that's what you're going through and you're always just going to love this thing, this yeah, place. I love it. Yeah. I love it so much. <laughs> when I first got here, I was like, oh my God, I don't think I belong here. I was here. Like, Same. I think it was just, also because there's such a big group of Irish people. And whenever I went traveling, it was sort of to get away from Irish people because I went through a bit of a shit time. Yeah. And because it was like a big group, I had so much anxiety. Like, oh my God, nobody likes me. I was here stuff. Like, it was just my head was all over the place. It's a but big group. Going through that work and realizing that just loads of different things and heal that person. And we all love you. <laughs> You're so silly. I love it. <laughs> um, what is next for Braveway? So I'm currently writing, well, I actually basically wrote another course already. So we have another course coming out. It's probably going to be a while because I'm going home to do all the Brave Retreats. And then we finish the Brave Retreats and then we're going to Australia and hopefully opening a headquarters there to begin like a women's, it's almost going to be like a women's wellness center. So like you're going to pay like a subscription, like I, this is my idea, I'd like to have like a subscription. It's not going to be much, do you know what I mean? It's, this isn't going to be my profit thing. You know, this is going to be my my baby. Mm. And I wanted to have, I wanted to have like classes. So you've got breath work, yoga, meditation, workshops, like inner, ch- inner child stuff. Love it. Um, you know, then there's going to be like therapists there, blah, blah, blah. And just like, you know, group therapy. And then there's also going to be coffee and a Froyo machine. I don't know. This is like what I've visualized. And like I get up every morning and I open the door and I have my office in there and like people come in and say hello. And I just, I just have this vision of this world. I don't know. Was it for women only or women and gays? <laughs> women and gays. <laughs> no, boys can come too. I, it's not meant to be women's, but it's meant to be like everything. But that's why we... We did it in blue because the brave way is blue. Yeah, we yeah. were going to originally go for purple, mm-hmm. and I'm so fucking glad we didn't because so many men have done the brave way, and they have sent me the fucking nicest messages about how they have like found themselves and quit their jobs and like doing all this other stuff. And I'm like, so glad I like mark- marketed it as blue. So yeah, I love cool. that. Um, someone said how to deal with being in a friend group that judges you. Do you know what's funny? Because you said this to me once. Did I? Right. No. No. Do you remember I was talking about judgment, right? Mm-hmm. And when other people are judging someone else in front of you, that is actually, you're going to internalize that. So an example of this is you says to me, like yeah, I, I says, right, about chatting on stories can be seen as like embarrassing, cringy, like people judge when people chat on their stories when you come from like a small town. And where does that come from? It comes from like somebody else said, you're like, you judge yourself before you go on. You're like, I can't go on here because it's, oh my God, that's cringe. Everyone will think I'm cringe. I'm like, where'd that come from? It's not actually you. You like came from somebody saying it. Mm. And you said to me, you were like, Sinead, oh my God, I actually like didn't go on my stories for ages and I really wanted to, but I couldn't because I remember people talking about you. Oh my God, yeah, I remember that. So you yeah. remember people talking yeah, about yeah. me, calling me cringy on my stories and you internalized that and you stopped yourself. I remember that. That's bad. Yeah, because I do remember someone said that to you, and I think I told you after was it ayahuasca or something. Um, yeah, we were talking about. I was doing a judgment talk, and I was talking about why you judge yourself and why you can't go forward. It's because you've mm-hmm. internalized something from someone else. Usually, yeah. And then whenever I did start doing it, those people who were talking about you, whenever I spoke or when I had done anything, my instant thought was, "Oh my god, they're gonna be trying to shit about me," and I don't, I don't care. Like to be fair. But, yeah, but at the time you did, and oh, like yeah. you know, we still still care. It's still like you still have to push through it, but. When you see that message that you help someone, that's mm. what gets you through it. I love it. I love it. It's like my favorite thing, honestly. Do you know what I mean? Like- <laughs> yeah, those are the things. So like if 
I'm telling you, like, if, like, Keggs has ever helped you, like, actually fucking tell him because it actually will help him, like, push on through and, like, you'll see his confidence even no push joke, even farther. Messages, like, whenever I keep yeah. up, like, she tell people nice things, like, well, that's what I'm trying to do to other people. But whenever I get it, it's just, like, you know what? It actually does mean so much because it then yeah. motivates you to keep doing what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? I always um, say that it's a nudge from my spirit guide. They, I, I always say my spirit guide nudges them. Oh yeah. Because say I'm like, oh, I don't want to come on my story today. Like I'm getting so much negative, and blah blah blah. And I always say my spirit guys nudge at them because you know I'm going to text you. Oh, I right. always say that, and that's so it's such a strange thing that. I never, I'm going to start doing that. That's a good way to think about it. Yeah, I because I got like a, I just got a lovely message once as well from someone's dad. And it was just so nice, and like to say that I've saved their life or something. I was like, oh my god, like it's just so, there's so many nice stories, and I, those things in my mind just get me through all the negative stuff do you know what i mean and it's just fucking worth it to get past it yeah it really 100%. Is. it's a work in progress too because sometimes you don't give a shit and other times you're starting to question it comes it's like a wave it comes in and out and out yeah but yeah it's, it's, it's get, getting there getting there getting there um advice to someone like me who sort of i've, I've sort of began about a year ago now but sort of in the social media journey at the start of it mm-hmm. what advice would you give just that mo- just you're speaking to the people that are following you like mm. stop focusing on like that growth because if you start thinking about that then you're going to think of lack and I always think like just that person in front of you just and I always say as well like you're talking to your you're talking to your past self I think like the most passion comes from talking to your past self literally and I always say I was talking to when I'm looking at someone I'm looking at someone who you know I'm looking at something that means a lot to me, like someone that means a lot to me. And then I'm also looking at me as a broken person who actually didn't want to be on this earth and a random passage in a book or somebody chatting on a YouTube video Mm. picked me up and got me going that day. I'm like, you could be that person. You could be. To help that one person who is in your situation right now. So you see old, you see you and then you speak to you of what you needed to hear at that point. I love that. That's yeah. sick. I love that. Um, someone asked, how are you two friends? So I've been following you, obviously, for about seven, eight years. So I've known you a long time. But how did you... Okay, right. I don't actually know how we actually became friends. Friends. Yeah. But you, obviously, were starting to talk in your story. And I was like, oh, I seen you. And then I was like, I need to follow him because I think he's from Tyrone. Mm. And Jack actually knew you. I went to school. Yeah, you went to the same school as Jack. So Jack was like, oh, I know. And I was like, oh, I must follow him. And then I seen you in Panties that day. Or Primark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my god, there's kegs. And he was like, oh my god, there's Shania. But we didn't say hello to each other. We didn't all fast each other. I was pure fangirl and insect. And I was, and I was fangirl. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, he, he's a TikTok star. And like, I'm not going to go there. And then, um, so I think it was my brave way. I think it was the first time. Was that the first time we met? We spoke on like FaceTime and stuff. Yeah. So we've spoken like, and I've always helped you with if you needed any advice yeah, yeah, or anything. Yeah. And I'm always open to that as well. If anyone need, needed advice, Same. especially if they're from my hometown. Because I'm like, come on, join us. Join, yeah. join, join. <laughs> Love it. It can't just be me. And then we went to, then it was my Braveway launch and Nicole was going and I was, and she was like, can cakes come on? I was like, yeah, I'm by cakes. And then we, we had a really nice. That was the best yeah, day ever. It was sick. That was, was one so of my good. favorite days in the whole world. I was going to go back to Mexico until where I lived. And then all these gals who are obviously Bali gals were like convinced me to come. And I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to go to Bali. So it's time here yes. probably from that event. And then you were coming over and I was like, do you, want to stay? Do you need a place to stay? Because mm-hmm. I had a spare room. Yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. just came over and then you've just like fitted right into the grip. I love it. Which is amazing as well because you're younger than me. Mm-hmm. And people always think like, people and I'm like no, it doesn't work like that in Bali you're literally hanging out with like 18 year olds and 47 year olds age doesn't matter like yeah it doesn't I'm matter I'm Marcus and he's what like 46 or something or no we can't talk about that. Marcus like that because okay. we love him I'll, we don't I'll, know his age I'll just, I'll delete that out maybe. he's gonna be listening to this one we're so sorry he <laughs> always know. never tells his age but, but he is know. he's a good looking man you, I have no to say. honestly the first night I met him I and tried to call love him. him no <laughs> I remember he said that <laughs> I did. I got very drunk. And no, can I actually tell you a story about Marcus? With Marcus, if you're thing, do you know he sent? He is the sweetest person. He tax. He sent me a fifty pound voucher for Zara. Oh yeah. And he's because because I paid for the bill when we went to where did we go? Mexicola for my leaving night. Oh yeah, yeah. And he was like obviously trying to pay it, and I was like, no, no, it's grand. I'm gonna pay it. And then he just sent me that. He's like, I just want to say thank you so much for being such a kind person, and you're like so much, and you're even kinder in real life. And I was like, Marcus. Oh my god, he so is a legend. If you're reading this, that actually meant so much to me. Sorry, that Marcus. was so relevant to the podcast. You can edit this out if you want. <laughs> right, love, love you, Marcus. To end the podcast, <laughs> tell me three things that you're grateful for right now. Okay, right, this is very easy because I just come off a of meditation camp where I just <laughs> listed things that I'm grateful for. So, this is so random, but um, 
I actually just paid for my me and my dad to go on this amazing holiday. Oh yeah. In two weeks. He doesn't know about it. This uh, is gonna be out in four weeks, you can say it. I'm taking him to Vegas. Oh <laughs> sick. <laughs> like and I'm taking him all out and I was like, that is my dad, like he was he's gonna love it and I'm just I'm so, so blessed that I'm in a position to do that. And see whenever I was going to pay for it, I was like fuck that's a lot of money mm. and I remember almost not not doing it and then when I was in my meditation I was like that'll be the best money I've ever spent like the, love it. thinking about all those experiences you know the time I took them to Australia my mom and dad not that's the only thing that sticks in my head is like the things that bring me joy like doing experiences with my family like that mm. and like being able to do that like it's fucking so cool so that's one thing I'm grateful for to be able to do that for my family um also for you <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. love that. <laughs> right now in this podcast, and also I'm just like, you know, you just make me really proud, and I'm just, I'm just happy for you. Oh, thank you. And number three, I'm gonna have to say my boyfriend, like obviously, because I was waiting for Jack guy <laughs> <laughs> because he's like so supportive, and I'm just like here in Bali, like babe, I'm just going to do a month retreat in meditation, blah blah, and he's just like, yeah, whatever. Cool. So Enjoy. I was just like, my boyfriend is so fucking chill, like I could literally go away for a year, and he'd be like, cool. <laughs> like nice. I'm so lucky. Love it, I love it, love it. Yeah. Well, Kabir, that was a sick wee chat. Thank you so much for coming on. I know you literally had one day before you go like, but thank you so much for coming on. Yes, and, and yeah. the next one we'll have to do it one, me and you, on mine. Yes, let's do Woo! it. Woo! Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> so yeah, guys, that is the end of the episode. Thank you so, so, so much for taking the time out and listening. I really hope he's got some value from that conversation because I know I did. Like, Sinead is a gal filled with wisdom and she's just so inspirational. Like, what a woman. Like, I'm so proud of everything she's achieved and I thank her so much for coming on the episode, for sponsoring the podcast and for also helping guide me to be the person that I am today and for showing me that it's okay to be who you are and do whatever you want, do you know what I mean? Like she's helped allow me chase my dreams. So I really, really, really thank you so much for that. And do not forget guys, if you wanna get your hands on the Brave Way Meditation course for yourself, for a friend, for a family member, all you have to do is put in code KEGS10 whenever you're checking out on the website and let me know how you get on because meditation is the shit, you know what I mean? And do not forget, please, 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 if you enjoy this episode, if you like what I do, Please hit subscribe, hit like, hit comment, do all the good shit, do you know what I mean? It really, really does mean a lot. Next week's episode, we have my guy Pete Pern on the podcast and I seen Pete at a festival in Bali. He was performing on the stage and he has so much knowledge, so much wisdom about spirituality, about breathwork, about finding yourself, all the sort of good stuff that you need to know about. Um, so he's on next week, so hit subscribe if you want to see that. And yeah, thank you so much again for listening. I love you all. Have an amazing week. And yeah, see you soon. Bye.